Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi. Uh, and welcome to the next episode of uh, Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Um, many of you have seen me at the Senior Center doing seminars or seen one of these shows and you realize that the goal of these shows is really to help seniors understand the, 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 it, the many issues that could affect you and also actually meet the people, meet some of the players who deal with these issues so that if you're thinking about them you actually have somebody that you might want to talk to. And today is uh, a person whom you may at some point really want to talk to. His name is Peter Lounsbury. Peter, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Thanks joining for having me. me. Appreciate it. And we're going to talk, Peter is a financial planner, and we're going to talk today about annuities. Um, and what's good, what's bad, how to tell the difference, just a whole lot of stuff. So it's, for, first of all, before we start talking about that, tell us a little bit about, so who are you? Sure, who and, am I? And where, where did you come from? Did you grow up? Are you a, are you a, we're here in Ashland today. Are you an Ashland guy? Are you around actually, here? You know, yeah. I, I grew up in Framingham, yeah. um, but I actually, for a while in my youth, I started out playing youth hockey in Ashland because the come Framingham on. program was filled. So I have a yeah. connection with Ashland yeah. that way. Uh, but yep, born, raised in Framingham, live now in Franklin, have a uh, financial planning firm in Franklin. Yeah. Uh, it's my small little shop, myself, and an assistant. And, uh, been licensed uh, since 1992, so I've been doing it for a while. Been on my own for the last 15 years. Yeah. Uh, and work with, with many folks that are close to retirement or in retirement and, and have a lot of questions in regards to what do I do with my money. So what do I do? Right. So let me, let me tell you from my perspective about annuities. Sure. Right? I know so often I get clients, and we were just talking about this beforehand, who will say, I would never buy an annuity. They're horrible. Yeah. They're terrible. Um, and honestly, when I talk to clients, I, I, I'm, I am looking at the annuities from the perspective of an elder law attorney. So most of my clients are talking to me because, among other things, they're either worried about getting Alzheimer's, yeah. or they have it, or somebody that they know has it, and they're just worried. Right. They're worried. So they're kind of talking about, so I see things through that kind of like focus. Yeah. So I'll tell folks, so my, my, so my rap on annuities is, as I've told folks regularly, if you've got if if there's two if there's a spouses, my, I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary, the the yeah, uh, yeah. the lo their local couple, yeah. and I and they have children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And Frank and Mary's goal in life is to die and be buried in the backyard, so they never want to leave their house. So I talk from the perspective of so what if Frank needs to go to the to the nursing home, right? Or if he's got real needs. Um, that he would otherwise be eligible for a nursing home, but fortunately Mary is there so Mary can help out and keep him at home. Right. In those situations, kind of what can they do? And as I tell people, I say in those situations, if Frank needs to qualify for mass health, there are asset limits, right? But if he's in a nursing home, he can shift everything to his wife Mary. Mary then can have some assets, right. but she can also, she can have up to $117,240 in assets, but she can also have unlimited income. So often part of this strategy is, I tell people you have to go buy an annuity, right. and the annuity right. has to have, mo but a particular kind, yep. people always think there's only one kind, right. you know, and it has to have, you know, monthly payments during a term that's shorter than her life expectancy. Right. And I tell them in that situation, you gotta buy an annuity. Right. And people right. will literally say, but I hate annuities, exactly. I don't wanna, I don't right. wanna do this, okay? And, and by the way, you know, I'm just gonna give one other, one other reason, one other thing, yep. the, the, and the, therefore, at a, there's a point where they have to buy annuities, but I tell people, if you're Frank and Mary and you're worried about the future, you want to make sure that if one of you needs nursing home care or needs a lot of care at home and needs to qualify for mass health, right. that you can take your assets and shift it to the other spouse. 
And if you own something, whether it's an annuity or anything, that, 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 that you can't shift yeah, you may be limited. to the other spouse, yep. right? then you've got a problem because that asset's going to be countable or that income stream, even if it's an annuity, that yep. income stream is going to all go to the nursing home. right? Correct. So that's the totality of my spiel and knowledge of annuities. So for, I guess t talk to us a little bit about annuities yeah. and, and how are they different from each other and at some point, I want you to go circle back and say, so, you know, about my issues, how right. do you balance off those issues against other issues? Is that a fair, that's a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, no, it's a lot. Okay. Throw a, lot a lot of speaking right. points on that. Right. But in general, with annuities, I'll put it out there because- no, it's, And it's, you have to talk slow because I'm slow. All right. All right. I'm this, to I am talk not, a, slower. I can get, a, a lot of lawyers did not go to law school because <laughs> they love numbers, right? Got it. So, right? Got okay, it. Okay, good. All right. So annuities, uh, I think, the big rap on annuities, and yeah. it's, it's common, everyone feels it. They, they, somebody, might, somebody might be driving in the car and they hear you know, a money show on TV and they don't buy an annuity, they're the worst thing for you. Y you hit upon some really good points where, in all situations, it's not the perfect thing to do. Mm -hmm. The knock on it, in my opinion, is they're very expensive. So there's a lot of internal fees that the insurance companies charge yeah. in order to be able to provide the guarantees that the annuities do provide. So that's the first thing, is that looking at it from an investment perspective, annuities are very expensive from that standpoint. Kind of upfront? The, the, the um, not necessarily, it's internally. So the internal management fees. I see. Of, of the you know, portfolio stuff. So if you I open see. up an annuity and you put in 100,000, yep. you're still gonna have 100,000 credited to the investment within the annuity. But how are you getting all these lifetime guarantees that they're gonna provide, lifetime income that they can provide? You're essentially paying insurance to be able to have that coverage that the insurance company is providing for you. So you're transferring risk in an annuity from you as the individuals, from an investment standpoint, yeah. over to the insurance carrier. So all yeah. annuities, that's the first thing, all annuities are provided by insurance companies. It's an insurance product. With yeah. investments as part of the underlying you know, investment you know, mode within the annuities. I see, and I suppose, if, so if I'm buying an annuity which is guaranteeing me something, Correct. whether it's guaranteeing me income for a particular period of time or it's guaranteeing me a, r a rate of return or whatever, right? Yep. Then the insurance company is doing something about insuring against the risk that they're gonna lose money as a result Correct. of that. Right. They've got a, th but there's no magic right. money they're, that's- they're in a, Right, so right. They're it's transference of risk. So they're taking right. it from the individual over mm -hmm. to the insurance company mm -hmm. and to have those guarantees, they're charging you something. So the, so the big thing is expenses, they're very expensive expensive to, you know, to, to maintain. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other big thing is, you know, is commission is another big thing. It's a big commission product in most cases, kind of in, in general. They, they yeah. do change, but it's a pretty heavy commission product. Can you, can you for, for, for purposes, I, I always hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you quantify that at all? Can you just give us an order of magnitude of if I were, if, if I were buying a, a $100,000 annuity, Correct. T tell me about the kind of the characteristics of the annuity, and then tell me about sure. what the what what kind of commission yep. someone who is who is would get for being able to sell that annuity. Right. So whoever's selling, and, and not all annuities fall into the commission base, but for the yep. most purpose for this discussion, they pay a pretty high commission. So yep. if you put a hundred thousand in, it varies on product to product, but a general rule of thumb is you, anywhere from five to as much as seven percent is from a commission that would go to the advisor or broker that you purchased that annuity through. I see, that's okay. a hefty commission. It's a pretty hefty commission. Yeah. But you also have to look at, okay, what is, you know, what's the net result to the client? Mm -hmm. All right, so if there's a commission, that money is not coming out of the investment itself. So again, your 100,000 going into the investment, the full 100 goes into the investment. Right. It's not as if 93 is going into the investment. It's just that, the, but the company the is basically, insurance company. they're taking a risk, they, they're paying the commission and then they're taking the risk that this investment is good enough, they're gonna make money. Well, so what the insurance companies do, because mm -hmm. they're in to make, make money and to protect it, they are providing a good service, but the same, so what happens is the insurance company will pay that 7,000 7, commission yeah. to the advisor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that comes off of the insurance company's you know, assets. The yeah. full investment goes in. Then you have what's called contingent deferred sales charges early withdrawal penalties or fees, you may have heard of that. Mm -hmm. And they typically run anywhere from seven. Contingent deferred sales charges. Correct. That's the same thing as an early withdrawal fee? It, yeah, okay. it's essentially the same thing. What that okay. simply is saying is, if you decide you want out of this investment, in the first year you might be hit with a 7% penalty. 
se yep. second year 6% and so forth till it yep. disappears to zero. Yeah, this is just what I've heard. The, the the, this kind of way of, of dealing with it. And, yep. and what it basically yep. is the insurance company is making sure that they're protecting themselves. They've already paid to the broker 7,000. If you close the investment out in the first year, they're gonna recuperate that, that 7,000. Oh, I see. That's, that's I see. where that comes in from. Yep. So that's, that's yep. always the, the time frame. Okay? Yep. Now, the way I look at it, I think annuities in general get a very bad rap. Uh, I think that oftentimes they're missold. Um, I've seen many situations that I've talked with for folks that have come in for a second opinion. I just opened up this annuity or I have, I have this existing annuity for a number of years. I was just told I should close this out. What do you think? Am I doing the right thing or not? And I've seen situations where uh, the advice they're getting is just completely erroneous. They've been given misinformation. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it makes me mad because it, it gives the it guys, makes you look bad. Well, it, it, because it, it, the guys it, it, that are doing the right thing yep. for their clients yep. and giving the right advice, it makes everybody look bad. Um, so, uh, you know, what I advise on that is make sure you know who you're dealing with. Make sure you trust the person that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And particularly, this is, is true, particularly with, with elderly folks. Um, and they by the way, I, ju I just turned 65, so I'm now I'm now rooting for yeah. I'm rooting for that team now, right? <laughs> I'm not I'm not just selling to that team. I'm, I'm, I'm car, with them. Right? Yeah. I'm with them. That's good. That's good. But you know, so I always encourage those folks to uh, include one of their kids or someone that they a trusted advisor, if they're yeah. going to meet with a, a financial planner, um, or even after they they meet with a financial planner, run it by somebody else just to get a second look at it. Um, I have existing clients that have friends, and they call me and say, do you mind taking a look at that? Are they doing the right thing? Right. And you'd be happy to do that. Right. Because annuities provide, as you know, and you mentioned it, there are certain situations where it's ideal, it's perfect. It can, it's a great estate planning you know, product if used correctly. Um, I do think some of the bad things that are out there are people were kind of sold a false bill of goods. Um, and it happens more frequently than I'd, I'd like to admit, but it's, uh, you hope to never see you that hope you situation. Wouldn't. Yeah. So, so t tell, us, or tell me about some of, some of those times yep. where an annuity would be appropriate, even though they're not in this, the Frank and Mary, this kind of immediate situation where they need to buy the annuity because it is not right. just the best option, but the only option right. to turn a pile of cash into an income stream and therefore qualify somebody from mass health. That would make sense. Okay, there, so, yeah, so, so, so in what other it. kinds of situations was, it, you know, was the annuity? Yeah, it really comes down to uh, individually dealing with and trying to yep. assess how comfortable they are with investment risk. I mean, to back it up a second, you know, it, when I, came, I graduated college in 1988, yep. started working in the banking in industry at that time. CD rates, one year CD rate at that time was average between 10 to 12 percent, right? So, I remember those right? days. So back then, of course, a mortgage cost you a lot of money, right? right? Exactly. Maybe yeah. forget that, but that's true. Um, but at that point, it was easy. And if we had those kind of rates today, I, I'd be out of a job, quite yeah. frankly, because it'd be very easy. You've saved all your working career, put, put money aside. You could put it into an FDIC insured, you know, CD and get 10 percent. That's fantastic. No risk. Absolutely. Right. That's not the environment we live in today. So what's forced folks to do is to look for other areas that they may not be comfortable with, investing in the stock market, investing in stocks and bonds, and looking at annuities and what yeah. other income vehicles are out there to help give them income in retirement. Which, aren't, which aren't don't have the same kind of FDIC guarantee Correct. to them. Right. right. So you're taking on the risk yourself. So What's very popular with annuities, and there's a couple different types of annuities. There's, yeah. there's fixed annuities, which are very similar yeah. to like bank CDs. In terms of that, they give you a set guaranteed rate of return. It's low, albeit low, but yeah. a little bit better than CDs, but it's a, it's a guarantee from the insurance company. Now, the annuity that I was just talking about, and that, and that is mm -hmm. in that you know, where, where a, a, an elder to qualify for Mass Health would right. buy an annuity for a specific term with specific monthly yeah. payments. Is, is that what that is called, a, a, fic, a fixed? You can use that as that. That would be more of like an immediate annuity. That's called an immediate annuity. Right. Well, okay. So you basically put the money into the annuity, and then yeah. you, you turn it into that guaranteed income stream. And it's just an income stream. But a right. fixed annuity, by, when you say fixed, you mean because there's a fixed rate of return? Think about, yes. So think about from the investment standpoint of it, the vehicle yeah. is yeah. fixed. It's, it, there's no fluctuation in the, in the principal value. I see. So you buy the annuity, and you know from then on, this is the rate That's of the return rate on the money that, you, right. that you've got. And there might be terms where it, it earns this for three years and then goes to a different rate, and four, but it's, it's fixed from, yeah. the, from the insurance carrier. Yeah. Variable annuity, on the other term, it's referring to the principal. It's subject to be variable. Yeah. So depending upon how the market performs, 
it's going to either increase or decrease. I see. So and, much and, it, and does it typically in that case follow the market? Is that is that the kind of the rule? Yeah. So again, yeah. same thing. You can invest it to be very aggressive. You can invest it to be very conservative, and that's where I, as the advisor, would work with them to see what's the best mix for their particular situation. So what's very popular with annuities uh, is probably two primary purposes. Yep. Uh, other than other than the you know turning it from an asset into an income into an stream, income stream. Right. So that's right. That, so we're, we're that, past that, that aside, discussion. Right. Yep. Um, you know, the two main reasons folks want to look at or consider an mm -hmm. annuity um, is either from a death benefit or from an income benefit. Those mm -hmm. are really the two driving forces of why folks might want to consider a, a variable annuity. The other component of two, which is, is there, um, I don't really push it as a big, you know, a big uh, positive, but mm -hmm. it's, it's there. It also provides for non-qualified money, being non-retirement money, it is tax deferred. So any growth within the contract, you're not taxed on it until you withdraw it down the road. Um, so it, just as, as that is true within, it, within any retirement, or are you talking about, about money that, is, that, is, that, is, that was originally IRA or 401k money and that right. therefore is tax deferred? Yeah, and that's exactly why I bring that point up. Yeah. An annuity doesn't necessarily mean it's a, an IRA. So you can have IRA money mm -hmm. and purchase an annuity within the IRA umbrella. Okay. Without without triggering the uh, the immediate payment of the tax. Correct. On that that's, a, that's a non-taxable event, but you can also take money they have just in general savings, not in retirement money. If you take that money, put it into an annuity, mm -hmm. the earnings going forward grows tax protected. Oh, I see. So it's more you know it's whether it's IRA or non-retirement. So but that's I, it's, I think a lot of people try to push or sell to yeah. someone. Say hey, why don't you open up an annuity? It's, it gives you tax preferred treatment. Yeah. Okay. Not really, a, to me, a big reason to buy an annuity. Yeah. Most yep. people are looking at either that guaranteed income, or a, a death benefit. So, from a death benefit perspective, somebody might come in and say, "Look at." Oh, excuse me. Now I'm just oh, going to yeah, ask sorry. you a trivia question. Yes. So, do all, what, one of the other reasons why people will talk to me is that is that they're trying to make sure that when either of them dies, they don't have to deal with probate issues, and ideally, Correct. that when the two of them have died, yep. that they're not burdening their kids with probate. Right. right? And as I, as I tell people, probate, it is an expense. The price of probate has gone down, interestingly, over the last several right. years because of change, some changes in the law. Yep. But you can still be looking at three to $10,000 in probate costs, right? So that's not an insignificant amount, right. especially for kind of a larger estate. So to my question, are, are, are all annuities, I know that's a bit, of two, are yeah. all the annuities that you see annuities yep. in which the owner of the annuity, the, my Frank and Mary, yep can name their children as death beneficiaries so that the asset doesn't have to go through probate. Correct, yeah, and that's, that's one of the key advantages of the annuities as well, is that it does avoid the whole probate. In, all, in, in everything that you've seen, M right? Most can be set up that way, yep. yeah. That's, that's, yep. that's, okay. that's pretty standard, yeah. So you can control where the, the funds yep. go. Yeah. Yep. You can, depending upon the situation, have it set up as a trust. You can have, I've had situations where it made sense for the trust, mm -hmm. the grantor trust, to be the owner of the, of the annuity. Of so the there's annuity. different reasons. Like, like anything else, as long as you're using it for the right reason, it's, it's a fantastic you know, tool with that. But you know, for the example of a death benefit guarantee, some yep. folks will come in and say, I've got these funds, I want them to go to my kids, I want it to go to my grandkids, I don't need it myself. It might be someone who's late 50s, early 60s even, and yeah. they've got you know, enough other assets to provide for their own kids, they just want to set it aside. So that's a situation where it might be someone that wouldn't really be appropriate for an, an annuity. All of a sudden, if they're saying, this is when I just want to get as much as I can out of it, but have a guarantee they're going to get at least X amount. X. You can put it it's in the And it's annuity. not at risk. It's not in the it's, stock market. Well, you, would, you could invest it in the market. Yeah. In that particular situation, you might want to be a little bit more aggressive than you would otherwise. And yeah. look at contracts that have death benefits that reset every year, meaning at the contract anniversary date, mm -hmm. They'll take a look at the account balance. When the annuity, that's when you when you're talking about annuity, it's a really a contract between me and an insurance company, insurance company right. that says, you know, you're getting the money, right? So the money is technically yours right now, but here are your obligations. Very much like a life insurance policy, right? Yep. It's, it's a yep. contract. You, you know, if you if I die, I want you to pay somebody, some third party, right? We, we, kind of jumping topics here yeah. a little bit, but one point that that brings up: some people have the misunderstanding that they buy an annuity they start receiving an income stream, they pass away, the assets go away. That's, that's not the case in most situations. Most right. of the time it's set up so that it goes to beneficiaries. So that it goes to somebody. But some people have that yeah. mis, 
conception that yep. that's the case. If I die, I don't, the rest of the money's in the contract, doesn't go to my beneficiary, well, it's well, not I, the case. But I think, once again, because kind of historically, that's really what annuities did, Correct. right? right. In the old yeah. days, I always yeah. tell you, that's what they were called annuities, you know, because you were you typically getting an annual payment, right. typically for your lifetime, and at the end of your lifetime, they've, those, they've pay, those payments went so away. They've changed so much over the years. As you know right. now, they, they, they can, you can pay out on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, very, very flexible from that standpoint. But you know, so some of those features that you can purchase, yeah. and they don't all come with it. It's kind of a la carte. You can kind of select the benefits and features that you want. But the death benefit one, that particular one, the way mm -hmm. it works, they take a look at the value of the contract from mm -hmm. the investments within the account every year, contract anniversary. If it's higher than it ever was previously, that's the new minimum death benefit. I so see. over years, it could ratchet up. Let's say 200 goes to 280. But then the market, like 2008, drops 40%. Now the contract value is 190. If they should pass away, they've locked in that 280,000 going locked to their beneficiaries. They've locked in that higher right. number. Yeah. Not, not, a bad, not a bad guarantee to have. If they right. have I've everything else that. covered, they've got other assets. They don't, they don't depend on that. Right. Uh, variable, the other one is the, is the future guaranteed income. What does that mean? You know, so basically, you can put money into a, a variable annuity. Mm -hmm. Again, there's bunch of different types of ways, but just in simple terms, yeah. you, there's, there's what's called a benefit base. So mm -hmm. it's a new, new term. So you've got the contract value, which your money comes in, the 100000 comes in, you invest it, it's going to move based on the market. Yeah. And then you also have at the same time running what's called the benefit base. And what the benefit base is, it gives you a guaranteed growth based on the initial investment. So the 100000 comes in, there's a contract that will say every year we'll give you a 5% compounded interest going forward to the point that you want to start receiving income. So let's oh, say you I open see. it in your 50s. I see. And it's going to, 5% is going to ratchet up. So when you're 65. And because you've told me that the money that is growing, that the insurance company is using to grow your $100,000, right. until, until you're pulling some of that out is not taxable. Correct. So, th so that you're growing this pile of money over a period of time, basically tax-free, right. even though it's not IRA or 401k money. Correct, while, while it's right. growing. Once it comes right. out, you're going to be subject to taxation right. at that point right. with the regular IRA you know, rules. Right. But that growth rate, that benefit base, so let's say you, you open it when you're 50, and then you know, 12 years, 13 years, it's up to you when you decide to start taking the income. And that's yeah. really one of the biggest things that I provide for clients is you know, where do you take the income from? Do you derive it from Social Security? Do you take Social Security at 62, when you first are eligible for it, do you take it at full retirement or do you defer to 70? Take it from your IRA accounts, take it from an annuity. What the annuity can right. provide is a you invest it today, you know a minimum 10, 12 years down the road what your guaranteed lifetime income will be from that contract. Oh, I see. So I see. It, it, it's, you know exactly when you make the initial investment, a minimum. So what will happen 12 years out, you say, okay, I want to start receiving income. You take a look at what that benefit base in the contract is compared to the actual contract value. Whatever is the higher amount mm -hmm. between the two, that's what your guaranteed lifetime income will be based on. Will be based on. So what it does is, you can still invest it in the market, get some kind of future growth rate, and then know exactly minimum. I know if the market does nothing here on out, or goes down from now, from when I make the first investment, right. to when I need income, I know I've at least locked in some kind of future earnings. So in all of these cases, we're ju you're just kind of just shifting some risk regarding these kinds of what what about regarding something that might happen in the future that's from you to the insurance company that's exactly in return right. for some price right in return and for a simple some way price. to look at it you know years ago most folks worked for a company and they had a pension yeah so you'd work you work you work in a pension and you receive that guaranteed income basically what an annuity is it's the same thing um, so it's just another source of funds I like to use I'm not a huge you know proponent of, of annuities um, I do think they are appropriate, again, in those certain si situations. So, so for a client, I, I don't mean to, to cut yeah, you off, but I'm just, as, as I'm thinking about it. So for a yeah. client, if I'm that, if I'm Frank and Mary, as a matter of fact, in my example that I always show at, 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 at senior centers, Frank and Mary always have an annuity that's worth you know, $100,000, $200,000. So I'm, yeah. if I'm Frank and Mary and I've got that kind of pot of money, right, and I'm 65, what else, where else could I, oop, now, you know, one of the rules of thumb that I'm supposed to have taught everybody yeah. is never leave your phone on when you're on TV, <laughs> right? What else could I do if I wanted some kind of guarantee that way? Is there any other vehicle other than annuities that will give me those kinds of guarantees? Not, not really as far as future guarantees. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, the, the annuities are kind of have the, 
market from that standpoint. From as far as the future get buy a contract yep. today, know exactly what it's going to generate for you. I see. You know, down the road. So uh, in terms, so so very so interestingly, if, if that's kind of what you're real interest in, you know, if you're interested in it, that probably is not a bad. This is probably not a bad vehicle. Correct. Right? I, it, I mean, I, I know some clients of mine. They love just being in the stock market. I mean, they love yeah. watching it every day. They're just fascinated by it, you know. And I say to myself, more power to them. I mean, right, I, right. If, well, you, so if it, you love that, a, that's great. A big part of it is how much they're comfortable right. with taking on that kind of risk. That, yep. That's without without saying. But let me just you know, in terms of looking at, you say they've got a pot of cash. The yep. problem that I have in a lot of cases, if somebody comes to me, and they have, let's say, maybe. To, you know, 150,000 in an IRA balance, which is not right. uncommon right. these days, nope. and that's not a lot of money nope. to generate income. The problem that I have when I see other folks look at it, I would never take somebody that has 150,000 in their IRA balance, and that's pretty much all they have, yeah. and put that entire thing into an annuity. You can't do it. The reason is I always like to have my clients have options available to them. But well, they're going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> now, for everybody out there, remember, don't ever put yourself in that embarrassing situation of leaving your phone on while you're on TV. Now, go <laughs> it's, quite, go <laughs> it's quite all right. Where were we getting? Oh, so we're talking about the... Uh, so you, you would never allow all yeah. of the money to so go that, into that, it's, it's, it's never an all or nothing situation. Right. But for someone that has that balance, I like my clients to have options. You know, yeah. I've looked at some cases and someone came, they opened up an annuity, they put their entire IRA balance into an annuity, and their circumstances changed. So they came to me and they said, you know, I think this guy did wrong by me and yada, yada, yada. Right? It happens. Right. Right? I understand. Um, it's, it's appropriate for someone that has three, four, five hundred, maybe take one, two thousand, hundred thousand of that, put it aside. Right. Because at the end of the day, I firmly believe that you're going to get a better overall return just being invested in mutual funds, ETFs, just individual portfolios yeah. versus annuities. Versus annuities. Primarily because of those internal costs that annuities are much now expensive. we're starting to run out of time, yep. so I'm going to ask. I want to ask one other question. So, sure. it is if I own an annuity, if I'm Frank or May and I own an annuity, yes. do all would all annuities allow me to transfer that my my ownership interest in that annuity to my spouse or to my children? You've told me Again, that it that, falls that, into like yeah. So if it's the, an IRA yeah. annuity, then IRA rules basically a spouse receives the investments basically as their own. Right. Holds true with an annuity as well. So it's I'd have same. to cash it out in that case, but that well, would have been- You wouldn't have to cash it out. So, and again, some contracts uh, no, will No, I'm vary. saying if I, if I have the money and I need to transfer the money to my spouse right. for, for these mass health Oh yes, reasons, correct. If you're right. both living, that's correct. Yeah, I got it. It's still their individual assets. I got at it. That point. And so in, ge and in general, it would sound like this is your job. Right, that you're, you know, people will often ask me, they'll say, well, what do you think of this investment? Or what do you, yeah, I'll say, you yeah. know, you're talking to the wrong guy, right? right? right. So your, your job is to, is to help people do the math here. Correct, yeah. And then, so that they can kind of intelligently figure out the risks. Yeah, what I like to so, do, particularly if you're talking about elder care situations yeah. and clients that you'd be dealing yeah. with in those yeah. situations, is set up a meeting with all folks involved. So advisor, the attorney, and the clients and really walk through their exactly. walk through their information. Get Make everybody sure. there. It comes down to education. You know, educate you on what your options are and then right. you know what's going to be comfortable for you. Exactly. You know, that's that's how I basically treat every client we Peter, meet. this was great. I appreciate thank, you. Coming thank in. you very, very appreciate much it. for coming. Folks, this is a really complicated topic, but I thought Peter did a great job of kind of really encapsulating or in some in, you know explaining some of these issues. I appreciate your tuning in. Thank you for coming, Peter. You're welcome. My and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Bergeron Briefs.